Epic haul or massive bust? You guys let me know. What is shaking YouTube? This is your host, Lawrence, over at Mighty Comics and Collectibles. And like always, welcome to the show. Today, we have something totally different on the channel. I always tell you guys this we're not just comics, we're all about collectibles here on the channel from toys to cards to comics to video games, arcade games. You guys know I'm into as well. You could see a few behind me, but. With that said, I had a chance to pick up an incredible haul from my LCS this past weekend. They actually posted something to the Instagram and I was all over it. But before we get started in the video, like always, I ask you guys and I thank you guys. We're literally like six subs away from 8,000. So thank you so much for always supporting the channel. If you're not a current subscriber of the channel, do yourself a favor, hit that sub button. I can promise you, you will not regret it. Me guys, this has been a wild ride over the past five years and I can't thank you guys enough. So do me a favor. Sit back, relax, and let's get into it. So like I said before, we're not just comics here on the channel. We talk about everything collectible. And I had a chance to get some complete in-box vintage Nintendo Entertainment System video games at my LCS. If you guys don't know, Zap Comics is like one of my favorite places on earth. Not only do they have comics, toys, statues, anything you could think of, but sometimes they get in some awesome stuff that you really don't see too often at comic shops. And this time was no exception. So they got in actually eight complete in-box or near complete vintage NES games and some of them are some of the most desirable games you could want for the NES. Now, if you don't know this about me, guys, I'll tell you this right now. When I was a kid, I had an Atari 2600 and had some really fond memories of that system. But when the NES first originally came out, my cousin got this thing like literally like day one or day two. And I actually ended up spending like three days at his house just playing this thing nonstop. So what did I do? I went home and I begged my father to try to find one of these things. And he actually ended up purchasing it for me for Christmas. Ever since then, I was hooked. To me, it is the best video home entertainment system there has ever been in video games and I know I'm probably going to get killed in the comments for this one but too many classic games that I grew up with that I still play to this day and that's unlike any other console so with that said I was actually able to pick up six of these games two of them were complete in box and four of them were actually only missing the manual so what did I do of course I went on eBay and actually picked up four of the manuals for pretty cheap I think I spent less than like $85 on the four manuals so add that into the price and of course we'll see how I did so the first one I want to show you guys is a copy of Metroid. You guys remember this game from the early 1980s, one of my favorites. I actually paid $110 from Zap Comics, and as you can see, it has no manual. The condition of the box is not the greatest as well. It's going to bring down the grade of this one, but I was able to find a manual on eBay, paid about $23 for it shipped, so you got to add that to the cost of this one. So I paid around $133 just to have this game complete in box. I'm going to show you what's inside quick, just so you can see what these original games look like. With that said, the next step is to go on ebay and try to find a complete box that was sold recently and i found this copy that was sold on june 15th for 175 dollars now with that said you can see this copy is definitely in better shape than the one i purchased but again we're talking about a hundred something dollars so i wasn't too mad considering what i paid for some of the other ones that i was able to pick up let's check them out so the next one i'm going to show you guys is personally one of my favorites it is a copy of contra Everybody remembers this game from back in the day. Now, as you can see, this one was without the manual as well, and I paid $100 for this copy. This one is definitely in better shape than the last one. Not too bad considering its age, but with that said, you got to add about $23 I had to pay for the manual. So again, $123 I paid. So let's go ahead and check eBay one more time. And as you guys can see, there was a sale on August 20th for a Contra Complete in box, which this one, looking at the pictures, my copy definitely seems to be a little bit better. Was sold for $123. $12.50. So again, I paid a little bit better than that, but my copy is definitely in better shape. Of course, the next classic I want to show you guys is a copy of Castlevania, the original from Konami. You guys can see on the price tag what I paid, $100 without the manual. So again, add that $23 in, totaling $123. The condition of this one is actually not too bad. Not the best, but still in decent shape as you can see pictured everything is there the one specific thing about this one i was actually able to pick up a manual still in the poly bag which is pretty awesome we're going to check out ebay find a comparable sale on september 3rd of this year just a couple days ago with a complete castlevania inbox sell for 199.99 so i think we're in the green on this one 
So up next is one of the games I could not beat as a kid, no matter how hard I tried. Of course, it is a copy of Zelda II, The Adventures of Link. Now this one I was able to pick up for $100. The condition is subpar in my opinion. You can see on the top portion of the box, there definitely is some fraying going on. But again, bought this for $100 with no manual. Paid $23 again for that manual ship, so $123 for the total. As we check eBay though, check this out guys. I found a really good condition of this thing, complete in box, that went for $382. But like I said before, condition is everything when we're talking about these complete in box games. So again, I only paid $123 for this one just to have in the collection. Thought it was a pretty good deal. I want to hear what you guys think in the comments. So going from one Zelda game to another, this one I did beat as a kid, although it did take me a long time. Of course, it is the original Legend of Zelda. Now this one can get quite pricey depending on condition. Of course, I paid $100 for this thing complete. However, as you guys can see, the manual for this one does have the cover ripped off. So I'm considering trying to find another manual to pair with this complete in box set. But either way, let's check out eBay and find a last sale. And I found a doozy. Back in June 13th of this year, a really nice copy of Legend of Zelda Complete sold for $495. I'm assuming it's because it does have that insert, which mine does not have, unfortunately. We'll see if I could find one for cheap. But either way, $495 compared to the 100 bucks that I spent on this thing, pretty good deal in my opinion let me know i do know like i said before there's a lot of different types of boxes for the original zelda all different types of seals stuff like that so be aware if you're trying to look out for these things on ebay or wherever you find them so usually when I do a haul video, I save the best for last, and this is no exception, all right? When I saw Zap post this, I couldn't type fast enough to message them and see if this was still available because I really wanted it because I knew it was a pretty good price. So if you haven't guessed it, it is a copy of Super Mario Brothers, the original, and you could see what I paid for this thing, $175 complete. And this thing is actually in pretty good shape in my opinion, although I am a novice when it comes to this stuff. So I tried to compare it to other sales on eBay, and I gotta be honest, there were a lot of sales that occurred for this thing complete in box over the past few months so did find one sold august 20th for a crazy 432 dollars now like i said before i am a novice when we're talking about these complete in box video games with the seals with some of the print things that are on the box stuff like that some of the screws that are in the cartridges which is crazy as well that i did not know about but either way so for 432 dollars i paid a fraction of that for this thing and we're going to find out what i actually have because i'm actually thinking about creating these things i want to hear what you guys think down in the comments we're going to go right now and check out cgc video games but we're also going to check out wada and i want to hear what you guys think in the comments about both of these companies have used them before the pricing stuff like that let me know what you think so let's start with CGC, considering I'm more familiar with them. And as you can see, there's definitely a few tiers that you can use. The standard tier, which we may use, has a max value per game of $2,500. And the fee is only $35, which is actually, to me, a really good deal. So I want to ask you guys, why are we spending over $100 to grade one comic when for $2,500 worth of value for a video game, it only costs $35? Bucks? To me, that makes no sense. Regardless, we're talking video games and the current turnaround time right now for CGC. GC is actually only 30 working days. So it's roughly right 45 to 50 regular days, which to me is also is not that bad. They also have a walkthrough tier for unlimited value. Obviously what I have right here, that's not going to work for us. It is $125 per game plus 2% of fair market value. They also have other tiers, I guess, if you want to cross over games from one company to another, we're not going to use that service. They offer light cleaning for $10, extra life cleaning, which is a heavier cleaning service for $40, pedigree grading for 10 bucks, reholdering, stuff like that. But for us, we probably use the standard tier of $35 per game. So let's check out the cases they offer at CGC for video games. From looking at them, I actually think they have the best case when it comes to graded video games from what I've seen so far from the different grading companies. Very clean, very concise. I've heard from other people saying it's not the clearest case there is regarding video game grading, but to me, I think it looks rather nice. The one thing I'm going to gripe on is the label, right? We still have that CGC universal grade. They do have qualified grades also in green, which is also horrible for us, you know, graded collectors out there. We never like those green labels, but regardless, not a bad case in my opinion. 
So let's go ahead and check out our other option, which is Water Games, which I know they're going through some kind of lawsuit right now with uh, pricing for some of the games that were sold, but I don't know too much about it. But let's check out their pricing right now. They have a turbo option, which is $50. Again, a 30-day business turnaround time. There's a speed run, which is only 15 business days, that is $60. And they have a warp zone, which is crazy, $150 for five business days. And I'm not too sure who's going to spend $150 to have a video game graded, especially if if it's a pretty cheap game, but I know some of these things, if they're sealed in box and go for a crazy amount of money. So just like comics you can get out of hand grading these things. But for us, we're going to probably do a turbo or a speed run, but again, $60 to me for a complete inbox game, not a sealed game seems to be a little bit too much money. So CGC $35 water game cheapest 50 bucks. So let's check out their case now. They recently have updated their case. This one definitely a lot better than the old one. The old one kind of looked like very boxy and pointy at the top. This one definitely more streamlined, looks a lot better. The one thing I also do not like about Wada Games is their label. Again, too much going on for me, in my opinion. I do like the black and white design, but then that blue 8.5 doesn't quite sit right with me. Just too much going on, in my opinion. But other than that, a really nice case. I have heard from other people that they do like the newer case as compared to the old one, so that's a benefit. But is it worth spending an extra $15 per game in order to get this case over CGCs? I'm not too sure. The one other thing I do want to mention about WADA, I have heard people submit games and they've had them for close to a year. I'm not sure what tier they used. I'm not sure what they submitted, but that to me is unacceptable. When I hear that CGC is sending games back within a month, I think that's pretty good service, probably because they're not too busy. And I'm also not too sure who's really dominant in this space as it is right now. So if you do great video games, I'd like to hear your opinion, what you've seen using either company right now. It would, would be really beneficial to me. So drop those comments down below. So that's it for the video guys. Guys, I hope you enjoy this one. Going forward, I'm not too sure if I'm going to be collecting other complete inbox video games. Some of the newer video games, I don't understand uh, why people would grade them, but these from the 1980s with the cardboard boxes, I kind of get it. And they're still relatively cheap, right? You could pick up a complete inbox Super Mario Bros. for under 200 bucks. To me, I think that's worth it as compared to comics, where some of the more important comics out there go for thousands and thousands of dollars. So this is a cheap way to collect things if you are a collector like me, especially when there's nostalgia involved. So this is Lawrence over at Mighty Comics Collectibles saying thank you for watching and I'll talk to you guys soon.